And you could do the same thing for S man, which you'd have to do to know for sure. Hmm. So I'm not sure why my figures aren't showing up. All right. Well, again, I'll try to reproduce the figure, and then you can check the notes for the real one. But, you know, I reference all the figures from <laughs> Zobak's book, too. So basically the idea here is that if we imagined a hemispherical bowl centered on the geographic coordinate system, so north, east, down, right? And we, in this bowl, we plot the, the location of the bottom of the borehole. So if the borehole started here and deviated, and then it ended up here. Right? So the place where a deviated bore would cross this hemispherical bowl. Okay? And the idea is, if we then look down on the top of it, we can project this onto a circle which can have some concentric rings. And again, this is what the figure would show, uh, where these concentric rings would represent like 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. And so then, and then this would be <coughs> north and east. We can then say plot, in this case, this is, um, you know, let's say the angle of this is 60 degrees and it's right under right under projected under the east direction then this lo this point would be right here on the lower hemispherical projection plot okay And then we can use those and some additional color maps. And that's really going to be hard to illustrate. And we're going to talk more about it when we actually learn about the strength of rock. Uh, so we'll come back to them. I'm just going to show you a visualization today. But basically, you can color code then. You can color code this map to help you determine you know, uh, the locations. G given, a, given a principal stress orientation, you can then color code this map to give you the locations where you'd want to avoid drilling, uh, so as not to, you know, so as to avoid uh, wellbore breakout. Okay, so that's what the last two figures were just an example of, and you can, I'll fix those, make sure they're posted, and you can take a look. Okay, so uh, that's the lecture for today, uh, and this concludes everything that will be on the first exam, which is a week from today. Okay? I think I mentioned the other day, but I'll repeat it. About a third to a half of the exam will be conceptual. Multiple choice-like questions. Concepts. And those will all come from the notes and the lectures. Okay? And I don't ask trick questions. It will be explicit. Okay, it'll either be in pictorially represented or in words said in the lecture notes the answers. Okay, it will if it's something I said in a lecture. And I'm saying this so you have the videos, you have the lecture notes, right? I don't expect you to go back and rewatch all of the videos. You have them if you want to, right? You can. If it's a concept, if it's a concept that I talked about in class, it will be something I repeated a lot, right? It won't be just 
I want to ask you a question about something I said one time, and you know, for 30 seconds, and one of the, and you know, expect you to remember everything I said. Okay. So, for the conceptual part, it will be stuff that's explicitly from the notes, and um, yeah, okay. So, the other half to two thirds will be. You know, some you have to compute some solutions, right? So, and those will be from the homeworks. And I'm not going to exclude the type of wellbore rotations we talked about today because they're nothing more. So, while I, while I won't give you homework on them, they're really nothing more than what we. They're just another. It's just matrix multiplication, is all it is, right? And I won't ask you to work out a whole problem beginning to end. There's no way, I mean, that would take you the whole hour and a half if you had to do it by hand, okay? Yeah? Do we need to memorize the homework? Um, Let's, uh, I don't know what I want to do there. Let me think about it, because I want to say you could just have all the notes, but then, yeah. but then on the conceptual part it'd be too easy, right? So, I mean, there's not that many formulas. How about this? You can have one one page front and back of your your own, you know. So there's not that many formulas. So obviously, you should write down the rotation matrices and the and the equations that take you from, you know. The different stress representations. Any conceptual stuff on it? Sure. Can do however you want. <laughs> you know. I'm not going to check your your cheat sheet. The one thing you can't do, I will check this. The one thing you cannot do is print off all the lecture notes and shrink them down so that every slide is this big, <laughs> and then have a magnifying glass. <laughs> So it has to be, you have to prepare it yourself. Let's just say that, okay? So don't, don't just take my lecture notes and shrink them down. Uh, prepare, the, prepare it yourself, because that, that's a study aid, right? All right. Any more questions about the desk? So I can answer questions next Tuesday about the exam, but, but the lecture will be a different, you know, we're just going to move on, talk about constitutive models. That won't be included on the exam, but I can answer questions.